Hi guys, it's me, Pixie, a humble doll artist of yours. Today I will do another doll for my customer and a new video for you to watch. This doll is another clown. You probably saw the materials I prepared for her in my other video, Clowness. Firstly, it was supposed to be two in one video, where I planned to make two dolls in one video, but I decided to separate them. Both dolls deserved their special attention. They were similar, but still so different just as the essence of their characters, ultimate contrast of each other. The first one is a bright, cheerful jester, and this one will be a sad Pierrot. I made those two dolls months ago and honestly never thought about their characters too deeply. There just was a feeling that I wanted to make them together. So the process of their creation was parallel, and now I see why. For a balance of time, of emotions, of mood, of work and flow, of joy and grief, it was such an amusing coincidence to get such similar yet completely different orders at the same time. Those dolls were the first ones I lay my hands on when I felt I could be back to work. For some odd reason, I felt that this couple would be a vessel of the brittle harmony that I tried to re-establish inside myself. What can be better than to make such an opposite characters? Try to live through the process of creation. I always said that my dolls are the parts of my soul, and the more I think about it, the more I believe it is true. For some time I leaned to orders that were close to my own desires and subconsciously I picked them, never thinking about why. The first thought is always, oh, they are pretty, or oh, I like the character, or maybe even, oh, this one is challenge, and it honestly was paid well. Only in video and while writing scripts for it sometimes, I start to analyze the background of my intentions and reveal many intricate details about it. I try to remember how was it to make this doll why I made something the specific way. Aside from techniques, skills and visuals, what was there else? And most of the time there definitely was something. There was a meditation, the time that was spent on self-reflection, the time that was spent on the great focus and commitment. Each doll I make has a meaning, not obvious for sure, but still a meaning to me. This doll has a pinch of my sadness, acceptance and unconditional love. Previous has a courage, vulnerability and joy. Even now I feel that. All that I felt at once back then. Going through grief, through war, through the toughness of life is never easy. So it is unavoidable that art will reflect that. I try to make those traces of my soul almost invisible threads that will form only a concentrate of visual pleasure for anyone to observe. You are not obliged to understand it because, as with any art, you will see something for yourself in it. So there always has to be the room for your own interpretation. But of course, main focus is on the idea my client wants. Nowadays, I see that those ideas should align with my own. It brings me to the right state of mind, so I'm able to create exactly what they want. This way I can feel through the process and create something that will be cherished. And enough about it. How about more trivia about the origin of the sad clown concept in the first place, eh? Piero. That is how people used to call such a character back in the late 17th century. In the Commedia dell'arte, an early form of theatrical performance that usually came with a variety of facial masks. Firstly, we welcomed Pierrot into the world when he was presented in a parry, in a row of other characters played by an Italian troupe of actors. They were performing and they were known as the Comedie Italiene. Pierrot was a specific character that had such a name and had a very specific role. He was a character who was in love with Columbina, a little dove, a mistress, a servant, sometimes even a wife of Piero. And unfortunately for him, she always was in love with Harley Kane, the other character of the comedy, an absolute reflection of Piero. What a love triangle! It was one of the tropes that went with those characters. They transformed and their roles changed adapting to the fashion of the time, but something remained the same and we know those characters as they are because of those undying canons. Pierrot performed unmasked with a white and bare face, he wore a loose white blouse with large buttons and wide white pantalons. He was plain, pure, naive, just as his intentions to be accepted and loved. Pierrot was slow, clumsy and silent. He was always unhappy in love and dreamed of a better future in arms of his beloved and adored Columbina. He often tried to conquer her with gifts, but no flower bouquet was beautiful enough, and he could not afford jewelry. 
so it happened that he was committed to do anything to win her heart. But only rarely was he hurt. Usually Columbina didn't even know about his affection and had long been over the mountains with Harlequin. Pierrot wasn't always that desperate. And in Pierrot Lunar book published by Albert Giraud in 1884, he at last found his true love. And his broken heart was healed once again. He finds love instead with his best friend, the moon. In some cases, the moon and thus transformed into an intangible lover of flesh and blood, brought to life by the very stories that Columbina spurned. You could argue that that is the real love story. For if someone is not impressed by a person's essence and the expression of their desires, then perhaps that is not the person you should be wooing. Ultimately, those who love you for you will always see the truth of you and accept it. Pierrot put everything he had on the altar of love to Columbina, just only to discover that not every person is ready to accept you for who you are. Someday Pierrot will stop dropping his tears, will let self-love inside of him and will look around to notice that he's already enough. And there is a special someone who for sure notices his new serenity, expressing himself slowly and subtly in the liminal space beyond words. Sensitive, melancholy and intrinsically alone, Playful and daring through the subversion of language while suggesting the fraught and facile nature. He commonly was interpreted as a woman character because of his tenderness, soft features and feminine gestures. Back in the day only male actors were allowed to play in theater, so it wasn't a surprise that the audience had the space to their interpretation of the character. Said clowns can be considered scary, unsatisfactory, overall unpleasant characters, in my opinion often even too much. They are people, they hide their faces behind the makeup. Their face paint represents one of the most genuine and strong emotions that any human can express. Sadness. They paint tears on their faces to show vulnerability. Can people accept their tears? Or sad clown will be mocked because of so-called weakness. The figure of the sad clown is one of the significant in theater and circus art. We all saw those characters and maybe even wondered what is there behind the paint. Some of those individuals entertain people for a living whilst battling with issues regarding mental health within their personal lives, thus beginning the rise of the sad clown paradox. It is a psychological phenomenon Dr. Samuel S. Janus studied on clowns and jesters in hopes of understanding their mental profiles on a deeper level. He also wanted to understand how this relationship is portrayed to the audience and whether or not it affects the audience's reaction. Research was done to examine the different aspects that may affect the choice one makes when it comes to the decision regarding a lifelong career. That involves various forms of comedy. Additionally, the study explores how all those components come together to explain why said clowns exist in the first place. It was found that comics frequently feel like they are lack control over what goes on in their lives. Studies found that whenever one experiences constant fear of something, like the constant sense of having a lack of control, they would often turn to a comedy. They felt like their constant anxiety was greatly relieved when they turned into something to joke about, even if it was self-deprecation. Another trait that was proven to be shared amongst sad clowns is low self-esteem. Whilst comedy may be used as coping method to disguise one's suffering, it could also inspire a comic to use it as an opportunity to create relationship and seek acceptance from those around them. When clown sees an audience laughing at what they have to say and finds joy in it, it makes the comic feel like their life might not have to be as bad as it is. Humor is used in escape for a clown's reality and it makes them forget who they are off stage. Results of these studies showed that comedians often suffer from past dramas and use humor as a distraction from the real negative emotions. They feel often like comedy allows them to gain more control over their lives and alter the way people perceive them. So Pierrot is just a representation of very close to a human nature trope, very close and familiar to so many of us. Character that wants to be cherished and cared about, wants to be loved. And there is a lot of love in our world, we just need to find the strength to see it. Thank you guys for staying here with me today. In a moment you will see my Pierrot. The Sad Clowness. Hope you will like her and since it is the end of the video, I wish you to have a warm and kind day. See you in my next videos. Bye!
parfait J'arrête pas d'oublier que je suis déjà arrivé Et je peux respirer, il n'y a rien qui me court après Je suis là pour kiffer, faire de l'art sans me presser ah, ah. Je veux me libérer et mieux me diriger Je veux sortir de cette cage et je veux tourner la page tous mes côtés pour m'équilibrer, trouver ce que chercher. Les pommes pas arrivées, sortir quelque chose de vrai, je veux réussir à me lier. La connaissance du ciel, écrire les mots nécessaires Pour guérir et soigner mon âme et mon cœur qui saigne mmh, mmh. Je veux me libérer et mieux me diriger Je veux sortir de cette cage et je veux tourner la page Je réussir à m'aimer, apprendre à m'accepter Tous mes côtés pour m'équilibrer, trouver ce que chercher Je suis le diable qui essaie de me rendre dans que j'en ai marre